Welcome to the Inner Ho Uprising, the podcast about sex, love, and dating from the perspective of me, Sam, one black, non-monogamous, pansexual, feminist hoe who lives in New York City, who is distant, though seeing people, who has a mask on every time, who's down with the resistance, and who was growing into a lovely human being every single fucking day. Every fucking day. We All day, say. every. All, All day, day, every. 24-7. And me, Rodeca, a fat, black, non-monogamous, transhumanist, existentialist femme, trying to figure out her place on this big-ass floating rock who's experienced ego death, who has been to several universes and beyond, and I'm back to tell the fucking tale. Let's go. Niggas went on fucking interdimensional vacations over here I during did. the break. Don't let us take a break it. again because I'm going to just come back <laughs> with my your third fu- eye yeah, open your, as fuck. Your fucking Dr. Manhattan shit. That's it. Going just blue body, like, dick out. That's it. Just going to leave, go to Mars and be like, look, I did my time here. I already know what's going to happen. Time You're going to sit on that plan. one Mars rock? That one <laughs> that's it. Where he's just like, like the picture. They don't ever show the actual like structure that he built. They just make it seem like he's sitting on this rock. Like fuck it. Like there's nothing else. I don't Over know. it. <laughs> Done. Done. Gotta love that. It's guy. just just fucking an open plane behind him. And that's it. <laughs> Well, every episode of the Inner Ho Uprising works like this. Myself and my lovely rotating co-hosts talk about sex, love, and dating as it pertains to current events in the world, our lives, and yours. And occasionally we hit you with interviews with insightful folks or do deep dive episodes on a topic of our choice. On this episode, back, back from outer space, back from Mars, <laughs> we're talking about the beauty of modern medicine and penis arms, okay? Yes. Talking about That's penis it. arms. It's fucking important. I'm excited. <laughs> We're talking about the, the Black Sex Workers Liberation Rally right here in New York City. Shadow work and self-acceptance. Poly communities, LSD, and much, much more. If you would like to follow along with the conversation had in this podcast on social media, you could do so by using the hashtag Anahal Uprising so we can see it and the hashtag pod in so others. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can do so at Inaho Uprising without the G on Twitter, Inaho Uprising on Instagram and Facebook. And you can join our Facebook group by searching Inaho Uprising, C U M M U N I T Y. Uh, head to Inaho Uprising, Inaho Uprising. I'm saying it like I'm mashing it together because I'm just like, you need this. This is the information. Okay. Uh, head to InnerHoUprising.com to sign up for weekly goodies via our newsletter, pay a whole, or check out for. And for those of you in YouTube land, unfortunately, my kente cloth is across the room, so I cannot Damn. grab it. Yeah, I don't it's really have any props heart. with me. I have a Jamaican flag, but I don't really think that's fitting right now. But we're going to dim the lights. We're going to go to Slam Poetry Theater. I'm going to let you know that if you're freaking with the vision and down with the vibes, we need you to do us a favor and hit subscribe. If you're supportive of the hoes and want to see our success spike, do us a favor and click like. If you want to keep the conversation going during your time spent, do us a favor and comment with your thoughts and opinions. And last but not least, click that subscribe bell. Otherwise, as the good word says, hallelujah. You're going to hell. Woo! <laughs> That's just a joke. You're not going to hell. Yeah. My ponytail fell down. That's how much I cared about that. Please do all <laughs> of those things. <laughs> Your hair is disheveled because it's just funny. Please listen. <laughs> Exactly. And if you want to pay us to speak virtually at your school or conference about sex positivity, black feminism, podcasting, or other kinds of topics that we discuss on this year's show, or to host a consent, pleasure, or dating workshop, for your organization or to have us host a consent pleasure or dating workshop for your organization we would love to do that so to book us you can send us a line to ihu podcast at gmail.com and we will only do it virtually because when i said consent i spit and there could have been coronavirus in that spit that's a fact but during a virtual workshop that shit does not touch you it'll just get on the camera it'd be really weird and nasty (laughs) And everybody's like, can't, 
little shit ball on the screen. <laughs> Can you wipe that off, bitch? And I'm Everyone like, no. is uncomfortable. <laughs> But that's all oh, right. man. Yeah, because you can't get sick. Exactly. All right. Let's talk about our hoes of the week. The hoes of the week are when – hoe of the week is when we shout out the homies who have supported IHU in the past week. Hoes of the week get special nicknames, and the game, if they choose to participate, it's a choice here, is to guess the meaning behind their nicknames. We have many, many hoes of the week because we've been off for many, many weeks now. But we're going to run through the list of these people – so we got Julie, a.k.a. Jules E.V., who became a patron on Patreon. We got Philip, a.k.a. Philip Delphia, who edited their pledge for more on Patreon. We'd love to see that. We got Corey, a.k.a. Corey Qua, Corey Qua. Ooh. Ooh. He was the person of the West Side Story. Growing up in Alabama. Living a life just like a movie star. Oh, Coriqua, Coriqua. Ah, ah. That's all you get for now. Some of that is true. Corey is from Alabama and is an actor. Wow, so. you incorporated that so well. I thought you were just making shit up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the Alabama thing is true, but the other part is just the lyrics, right? Like, that's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Santana yeah, wrote true. that. Who was the other person? Was that Wyclef Jean? Wyclef was in there, but he wasn't the one singing. It was a duo, and I actually watched this video, like, last <laughs> <Yesterday>? week. Yesterday? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, literally last week, and it's, like, two dudes with, like, Tim's on, <laughs> two rags, and I was sitting here screaming. I was like, yes, Love to they see wasn't that. expecting you to fucking harmonize. Was one of them, it's like, was one of them Raphael Sadiq, or am I making that up? No, but that's a good guess, I guess, but no. <laughs> I was like, did you just think of a black? Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> I just picked a dude. Who was it? Was it music soul child? You had no idea. He just picked black men who sing from exactly. the nineties. That's all you did. Was no, it Tank? It no, I'm just kidding. I know it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Tank. Uh, but I think uh, it was just a one-hit wonder. Like that was their one song. Yeah, I mean, but it's a good song. It was a a classic. It was a classic. Yeah. And Corey, we hope we hope you enjoyed that. Um, then we have Angie T, whose nickname is Big Ann. She became a patron on Patreon. We got Amethyst, aka Amethyst Facet Five Cut Eight XM, which is a Steven Universe reference. Oh, I gave it away anyway. But yeah. Damn. Who became a patron on Patreon. I just didn't th- want anybody to think that I was that weird. I did. I don't think, I don't want anybody to think that I had like a severe break <laughs> during the, where I'm just like saying just fucking like numbers. In the middle of your thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. line. yeah. I oh, get we got, that. <laughs> we got Paws and Pothos, which that's the name you gave us, so that's the name we're going to get. I like it. Uh, who became a patron on Patreon. We got Jasmine R, aka Regal J, who paid a hoe. We have Amanda, okay. aka The Amanda Show, clearly, who became a patron on Patreon. We got Crystal G, aka Crystal Gem, obviously. It writes a patron. itself. It writes itself. It, it really does. Who became a patron <laughs> and bought some merch. We got Shamara L, aka Sham Wow, who paid a hoe, a grip, and wrote a note that said, you're spreading goodness and light. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Sham wow. We got Katie W, aka Knock on Katie, who became a patron on Patreon. Sonia JF, aka J Fabe, who became a patron on Patreon. We got Angelica Y, aka Pickles, who became a patron on Patreon. <clears throat> we got Chameleon here, Chameleon there, tougher than Nigerian here, who edited her pledge on Patreon. Thank you for sticking with us, Camille. Uh, we got you. Salisha B, aka Bussy. <laughs> You know why. Who became you know why, Patreon, Felicia. Who became you know why. patron on Patreon. We got Christina H, a.k.a. Tip, who became a patron on Patreon. We got Lita, a.k.a. Margarita, who became a patron on Patreon. We got Megan, a.k.a. Arcarly, who became a patron on Patreon. <laughs> we got Dania, who uh, also paid a hoe and wrote a note, and their nickname is Dan Yeah. And their note was, love the show. Thank you for all your efforts, energy, and light. Thank you. Thank you. And we got Naomi J, who uh, became who 
paid a hoe and wrote a note and signed the note nay so you self chose your nickname and your nickname is nay and nay's note was thank you so much for every episode and your labor of love but the episode you don't gotta go to college to get more knowledge was hella impactful for me learning as self-care wow i shared with my classmates in social work school honestly nay's idea of therapists as doms and akua's thinking from there were so mind blown and inspired thank you for engaging us in that another nay oh maybe that's your nickname another nay oh, another cute. one dj Khaled. <laughs> that's cute <laughs> Uh, also, thank you, Persephone, MR, Diamond, Jamisha, and Nikita for dropping some B-Day coin or B-Day coin in my cash app when it was my birthday. Thank you very much. We had two birthdays, y'all. Yes, we did. Shout out to Akua and whoever gave Akua money. Akua is not here to tell us that, but I'm sure Akua got B-Day coin also. Also, thank you to Samuel Cat who sent me a digital drawing of myself. Let me see if I can what? that out. Yeah. What? We got artists. Niggas do mix. be having artists, though. All right, let's see. I'm not on my regular Slack on the computer. Otherwise, I would just screen share it. But uh, here we go. That's me. Oh, hey. Yeah. And I know the picture reference, too. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So thank That's you, Samuel good. Cat. Samuel Cat has ideas for art regarding Inner Hole Uprising that we'll see in the future. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. How- Eva, if you would like to be a hoe of the week, if you're listening, you're like, I need a fucking nickname, man. There's some things you can do for a fucking nickname, man. You can leave us a five-star <laughs> review on Apple Podcasts. You can feature us in an article you've written or shout us out on social media. These are some non-monetary ways you can support us. You can fix my bun. That's also a Good. non-monetary way you can support us. <laughs> uh, we love monetary and non-monetary support, and we understand that in these uncertain times where the government is like, nope. Six hundred dollars? We're actually gonna take it away, bro. Now, maybe I don't know. Um, oh, that monetary oh, support is not feasible. Bro. For, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make light of what is fucked up, it, and uh, it, that is I everything. <laughs> I'm right there with y'all. Everything Ooh. is fucked up. Uh, but if it's not fucked up for you, we would love <laughs> your donations. Uh, so if you can spare some change, which we do not expect you to do so, do not spend your last dollar on us. But if you can spare some change, you can donate to us on PayPal at paypal.me slash innerho. You can become a patron on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash innerho uprising, or you can purchase some merchandise at innerhouprising.com slash merchandise, the links to all of which are in the show notes. Also a reminder that if you do become a patron on Patreon for $2 a month, you can participate in things like our Slack chat, our patron only film nights. And for $5 a month, you can join our Monday night Zoom hangouts. And at any Patreon tier, you receive access to our episodes a few days early and entry to our workshops and parties. Now we have some tips on how you can care for yourself. And I'm quite excited. Self-care tip of the week, y'all. So this week, we're going to talk about shadow work. Uh, Shadow. Um, This is a buzzword that I've seen, like, you know, on the internet, but also in, like, communities, for relationships, stuff like that, self-care, and, like, I don't have much to do other than self-reflect, and I think I say that every time since this whole pandemic started, and I've been really working on, like, trying to figure out how to be better, more productive, this, that, and the fourth, Um, but something about shadow work really spoke to me because it talks about something that we don't really talk about in general, which is kind of like the darker side of yourself. Mm. So shadow work comes from Carl Jung, uh, a psychologist, the founder of Jungian or analytical psychology. Um, And the shadow in or shadow aspect archetype may refer to the unconscious aspect of the personality, which the conscious ego does not identify in itself, or the entirety of the unconscious. And for example, everything of which a person is not fully conscious of. Mm -hmm. So in short, the shadow is the unknown side of your consciousness or the dark side. And it consists of like primitive, negative human emotions, impulses like rage, envy, greed, selfishness, desire, uh, power hungriness, all the, you know, the things that we just assume that we're better than or it's there. And we're just like, ah, look at all this good here, though. Don't Mm -hmm. look at all that. Like the things you're trying to hide under the covers. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But when we deny these things, they become part of the shadow and it kind of looms over you. That's where the name comes from. Uh, so shadow work is an introspective psychological practice that anyone can do and can lead to a more fulfilling life. Uh, when working with the shadow, you may have moments of awakening that lead to a greater authenticity, creativity, and emotional freedom. Uh, it's meant to improve your relationships through understanding yourself and accepting others, increase your energy, they said something about your immune system. I don't know what that means, but Oops, I was like, hey, that man. sounds good. It's just, you know, uh, overall enhanced state of well-being and mood, better communication with others, ability to set boundaries in your life, and to cease the cycle of self-destruction. Mm. That all sounds well and good, but it requires work. Mm. Really, it requires self-compassion and self-awareness. So we talk about this all the time, but it's really going, hey, I know that I'm a good person. I know that I can do these things. I know that I excel at being empathetic, right? Mm -hmm. But I also know when a lot of people talk to me, I recede within myself and I disappear for like three days because mm -hmm. I just can't take it. Instead of going, all right, well, I don't do these things or kind of denying those things about yourself, it's going, well, I, it, I do this to balance out the fact that I am empathetic. So that's what you're doing in terms of practicing. You're challenging the good parts and mm. realizing that they may have residual negative impacts, but also understanding and recognizing them is a part of the work. Uh, so you have to center yourself before you center your before you start working with your shadow. So you should be in a calm, clear, neutral space. Definitely, like if you're about to go into med meditation, it could. Uh, have close ties with mindfulness meditation, which is just really being aware of everything going on and knowing that you're in the moment and you have control. Um, being honest with yourself, but also with others. If you recognize these things about yourself, whether that be, you know, you might have jealousy moments. You can't say, well, I don't act on being jealous, so I'm not jealous and therefore I don't have to talk about it. It's better to have those moments where you say, hey, I didn't act on it and I worked on it on myself, but I was jealous in that moment it was because mm -hmm. of this. Um, also recording your discoveries. Let's say you don't necessarily want to share that with others, but you can write it down and be honest with yourself and just say, you know, this is what I felt in the day and this is how I learned from it. This is who I am, et cetera, et cetera. And also just watching your emotional reaction. A lot of the time when we're talking to people and our first, re our first feeling is anger and then we get over it, we kind of go, well, I didn't act on the anger. Same thing with the jealousy. So you don't pay attention to the fact that your first reaction was anger. Mm -hmm. But it's important to step back and go, but why was I angry? Even if I was able to process it, even if I wasn't able to process it, what made me so angry and what's the root of that? So mm -hmm. it's really engaging an inner dialogue with yourself and constantly doing a check and balances of the things that may be negative about you because everybody has these things that they have to work on or things that society says is negative because being angry is just like, well, you shouldn't be angry. You should be able to control your emotions, but you can't really do that when something triggers something. That's just mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. So for me, I mean, I could talk about it now. I can talk about it later, but I've definitely been working on some things and I've noticed some things about myself. I'll talk about it later, but I've noticed <laughs> things about myself and I've been doing shadow work. Um, and it's been kind of if, because I'm always, and I talked about this actually the last episode before we took our break, but I'm always thinking that I'm the only person that's like dealing with something. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, like, especially with the ties and like moving, moving in this poly space and like learning myself and all that type of stuff. I thought to myself, like, if you're not, if you're jealous and we talked about this, but I still had my moment where I was like, if I'm jealous about things then I'm not ready to be poly, but I'm like being jealous about certain things. Is natural. It's yeah. why. It's how you move it. And it's about not projecting those things about yourself and working on those things within yourself so you don't end up making it somebody else's practice, which right. is a part of shadow work as well. Um, there's also an archetype list. So it's things like, these aren't necessarily negative, but they're all things that are considered shadows, mm -hmm. which is like masochism, um, the, uh, the victim, like playing the victim personality, all those type of things. There's over 325 different archetypes. <laughs> oh, 300, sure. yeah. And this is like psychology is just adding things. That, like, that ah, kind of sounds you know? fun to go through. Like, yeah. oh, that's me. And, that's me. And that's exactly what is another way of practicing it is going like all these things that resonate with you. You look at it and you go, okay, even if you don't think that you have any, even if you recognize certain things, there's so much more to explore within yourself. And looking at this list, things will pop out and you're like, oh my God, that's 
that's me, that's me. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It means that first of all, psychologists know that you or know that someone, and you can like look at it and be like, how do I work through that? You know? I just uh, imagine they also- Carl Jung's like corpse. Sorry, I'm a dark person, but he's like holding a dis you meme. <laughs> dis you? <laughs> hey, hey, this this you bro? <laughs> like that's all it is. Yeah, that's like, all it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> And what about and, it? Or like the, the moon shit he's staring at and he's a big shadow and he's like, is it all shadow? <laughs> it's <always> thin, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's always thin. <laughs> um, but there are some books on the topic. It, it's like, two of the ones that stuck out to me was Shadow and Evil in Fairy Tales by Mary Louise Von Friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's one of John Jung's top students who explored the shadow of the psyche fairy tales. Hmm. So it's like- Oh, cool. Fairy tales is always trying to teach us something. Yes. But this one is just like very much tying in these principles and you can resonate with the characters, but it's a fairy tale. And I love fairy tales. Like, I used to be obsessed with some fairy tales. So this one, I'm like, I got to look at it now. Cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then there's, there's Meet the Shadow, The Hidden Power of the Dark Side of Human Nature. Um, it's edited by Connie Zwang. Zwing? Zweg? It's a last Swig. And Jeremiah, I'm sorry. And Jeremiah Abrams. Um, it's basically a collection of essays and excerpts from a wide range of writers, psychologists, philosophers, and poets, and it explores and exposes the shadow. Hmm. And it opens your mind to diverse ways to the way the shadow influences our lives. Uh, that's two books, but there's so many books on this. This is just, cool. You know, yeah. I'm trying. Everything I like that, that I everything that I'm going through, mm-hmm. I'm either trying to tell you or I'm trying to tell anybody who's listening because I'm like, look, we're going through this together. That's, That's a fact. It's a collective journey. And I really fuck I with that. Thank you for sharing this. I kept seeing that on like psychologists because I follow yeah. like psychology pages on Instagram, but I didn't know what it meant. So I'd be like, okay, scroll past. It's like, I don't know if it's because I'm following the same thing that you're saying, like a lot of like holistic psychologists yes. or things like the, the yeah. holistic psychologist yeah. who's on there. But like a lot of the infographics and learning about yourself has been speaking to me in so many ways because Mm -hmm. these can be such intimidating uh thought processes or just Mm -hmm. like subjects and you're like okay I don't want to read this necessarily in this long text book that I'm just like I don't know what's going on I think I should know it but for some reason it seems like everybody's on the same wave or maybe it's because we're following them and we're on that wave of just like exploring and doing all these things so when I saw it, I just kept seeing it. And you mm. see how things are popping out for me. So it's just like, <laughs> if it keeps coming up, I got to look into it. So yeah. I was like, shadow work, what's that? And it's been like the buzzword. So I was like, what is this? How can I benefit from it? And it's, it's really dope because it's just acknowledging the things that we try so hard to pretend like we're better than. And it doesn't mm. have to be negative. It could be something that knowing who you are and having the self-awareness awareness can actually make you better mm. and knowing these things about you. So yeah. try not to hide from these things about me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I appreciate like life is not all the light. Like in certain exactly. subsets of spirituality, they like embrace the light and dark side of like ancestral veneration yeah. and things like that and spirits and things like that. So like Definitely. you as a person is not just all one way. And to fully know yourself, you gotta you gotta get down with the darkness. You gotta get down with the sickness. What? Am I right? Oh, that wasn't the best one. I'm sorry. I felt it though. I, I mean, you can hear it. I it was in my heart. <laughs> it was right there. It was in my heart. Shout I out can't to do disturbed. Better, so. Yeah. All right. Well, now I'm going to turn on my best phone sex operator voice. Oh yeah. We would normally do a beat and stuff like that. Or Rebecca's just gonna dance. We recording dancing. virtually. That's a very interesting. <laughs> dance. You like that? When yeah, our re- go on YouTube to see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you want to see that sexy, sexy dance, head over to YouTube.com. All right. When our routines are changed, it's easy to forget to check in with yourself. How are you feeling? Do you need a break? If you need to hit pause and take a moment for yourself, Dipsy can help. Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions that are designed to turn you on. It's the titty shaking for me. <laughs> the titty, titty shaking, shaking that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> to turn you on and help you get in touch with yourself. That's what she's doing over there. She's getting in touch with herself. 
The stories are relatable and immersive, so you feel like you're right there. And there's something for everyone, whoever or whatever you're into. They add new content every week, so there's always more to explore. Find stories about a spontaneous hookup with a hot stranger. Getting closer to that sexy yoga instructor you can't stop thinking about or even stories about that new toy together or getting tied up. The wellness sessions can help you unlock new confidence or heighten intimacy with your partner. They add new stories every week so you never get bored. So spice things up today with Dipsy. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsy.com slash IHU. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash I-H-U, dipsy stories.com slash I-H-U. <laughs> I don't know what the end was. That was like a weird you were like fucking kind of a little bit. Yeah, I was, I was trying saying, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta tap into that, uh, that tentacle porn inside of myself. Anyway, we hope you go to dipsystories.com slash IHU. In the meantime, we're going to tell you about our Bay of the Week this week. This is an exciting one. Is that a monster you're drinking over there? It's a big old can of something. <gasps> it's, oh, uh, it's an Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> oh, Arnold yeah, Palmer. It all half and half. Oh, the influence. Yeah. That's what I'm drinking. Yes. This is a cup of old cranberry juice. That hey. I, left I that like that. Tonight. <laughs> I like that. All right, well, our Bay of the Week this week is Amare Simone. Amare is a Cali-born singer-songwriter and performer from Brooklyn, New York. We're Brooklyn at? We're Brooklyn at? Not here, niggas. This is Queens. I'm in Brooklyn. Yeah, but we disregard that fact. Anyway, (laughs) um, but shout out to Amare and Brooklyn. Uh, She has been creating music since she was a child. She's a woman of the world with many talents, having studied opera, jazz, gospel, contemporary, and poetry, and she sung music in seven languages thus far in her career. I don't even think I've ever wow. read seven languages. Holy snap. Yeah, shout out to I don't to think Amari. I can identify seven languages. <laughs> I have four in my head, and that's it. <laughs> I'm very curious about this four, but I'm going to move on. English, uh, Spanish, pig and French. Pig <laughs> so you talk English, Spanish, and French. That's, hey. that's the human there you go. There you go. Mandarin. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, Amara has been gracious enough to bring some new heat bow, 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 into Inner Ho Uprising with her song, Cull Hours. It's a beautiful ode to Black queer femmes, which you will hear in just a bit. Major, major, major shout out to Amari and her third EP, Agape Acoustics, streaming on all streaming platforms. If you'd like to hear that, or if you would like to check out Amari, Links to everywhere you can find her will be in the show notes for this episode. Also, if you're a musician, preferably a Black femme or non-binary person, we want to have your music on IHU. So if you fuck with that, you can shoot us a line to ihupodcast at gmail.com. Now into the actual show. And for the YouTube audience, I'm going to play Omari's song. So let me gear that up. (laughs) When you have to do something on your computer and you're just like, how does a computer ever work? Ever. Just fucking forget everything about it. Yeah. (laughs) Where the fuck did I put that thing that I just placed right before this? I I would literally sit down and just go, ah, man, I just. (laughs) I like hate that. (laughs) Let me unplug these so you guys can actually hear it because I don't know how to use Zoom. Here we go. You can hear that? Mm-hmm. You can't hear the words very much. Huh? Yeah. Oh, now I can't. Ooh. I 
Hey, uh oh. <laughs> There's always a technical difficulty. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, so that was really dope. That was dope. Shout out. That was definitely dope. Oh giving me God. SZA vibes, giving me Black Neo Soul vibes. I'm yes. definitely digging it. You know, I love SZA. So. I, we do know that you love SZA. Anything, anything that's Black Fem and pro, pro love and pure happiness, love and light, I'm with it. <laughs> love and light. Ah, why did my recording <laughs> stop? Wait, what? What's going on here? Now we're back. <laughs> the YouTube audience enjoyed us dancing to Amari Simone. And now we're going to get into the actual show with a segment that we like to call Fuck That. It is our current event segment. And today, talking about the fucking penis arm, bro. I don't know what you expected, but this is what you're getting. <laughs> And honestly, I, I think I actually think it's a very cool story, though saying penis arm sounds ridiculous, but yeah. So with all of the conspiracy theories and misinformation, it's been a sad year for science. Now we're going to take some time to talk about a scientific feat. A man has a penis grown on his arm after losing genitalia. I'm going to give a slight content warning for infection and disease because that is discussed a little bit. If that's something that you don't want to hear in the show notes, you'll find the time code to skip past that. But I'm just going to get into this and read an article by Yaren Steinbuch. Shout out to Yaren Steinbuch. That was featured in the New York Post. The title of said article, Man Who Lost Penis to Blood Infection Has New One Built on His Arm. All right. A British man whose penis fell off due to a severe blood infection had a new one built on his arm where he even got an extra two inches, according to a report. Okay. It's already good. It's already Yo, good. Yo, first line, I am invested. Let's go. That's why we had to shout out Yaren Steinbusch, who knows Yo. how to write a good fucking article. He's not burying the lead here, okay? Nope. He's, bur he's burying an extra Hook two inches. Hook line inch and fucking in sinker. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, so the uh, infection, this is not an article, but the infection developed into sepsis. And if you don't know what sepsis is, it occurs when chemicals release into the bloodstream to fight an infection, triggering an inflammatory, inf triggering inflammation throughout the body. Um, but Got it. it's like, it goes too bad. <laughs> and, that, and there's my scientific expertise. <laughs> it goes too bad, man. Uh, so Malcolm McDonald, who is 45, a mechanic, suffered a horrific infection in his perineum, that's your gooch or your taint, for those who don't know the scientific terminology, uh, that turned his fingers, toes, and manhood black, the son reported. Hey. You know what? Manhood oh is a transphobic term. Let's not use it anymore. Yeah. Negative points for Yaren Bush. Uh, I struggled for years. Check, What'd you say? I said Yaren didn't pass the vibe check, but no, that's okay. Didn't. We're gonna keep I going. That front, but we, yeah, we keep going. Uh, I had struggled for years with an infection in my perineum, but I had no idea what could happen. Uh, the separated dad of two from Thetford, Norfolk, told the outlet. So this is all an English story, by the way. Um, that's very interesting. I had no idea what could happen. You don't think know, that right? your dick is going to fall off. So, yeah, he's you, right. Not at all. I would never think that. struggling for years with an infection. I don't know if he was just like, ah, this is nothing, so let me not go to the doctor because I don't yeah. think he gets serious. Or yeah. he just like, the doctor was like, we don't know what's going to happen. Just look out. I, I do don't know. question what was going on there because 
doesn't England have like universal health care? Yes. So one would think. I don't know what happened. Just go. Why not? I yeah, I don't go. know. I don't know what occurred there. Uh, okay, next sentence. Uh, when I saw my penis go black, I was beside myself. It was like a horror film. I was in complete panic and deep down, I knew it was gone. I was going to lose it. Oh. Yeah, that's horrifying. Yeah. That is horrifying. Yeah. Uh, he said he was completely gutted when his penis just dropped to the floor in 2014, but his testicles nah. remained intact, according to the outlet. Imagine oh. your whole, because we don't have penises, spoiler. Yeah. Right? Imagine like your whole, because also like thinking of a different appendage, your titty just falls the fuck off. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like you lift up your shirt and it just plops out onto the floor. That's scary. Like that's it. That that's- is horrifying. That's horrifying. Oh my God. Yeah. So I can't imagine uh, the devastation. Then he says, because I had been through the devastation of knowing I was going to lose it, I just picked it up and put it in the bin. McDonald continued. And the put it in the bin thing was kind of funny to me. (laughs) Because I think British people just speak in a very matter of fact kind of way in regards to anything that's going on in their life ever. So just like, yeah, put it in the bin. I put it in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> I just knew. You throw it in the garbage. I mean, yeah. I mean, it made sense. Uh, though. You can't. Because it's just like, what are you gonna do? Keep it? I don't think. And he, he had already came to terms with it. I but don't think he could. Damn. Yeah, he, made his, he made his piece. He made his piece. Uh, I went to the hospital. Like calm. Put it in the bin. Yeah. Well, obviously, this is really. Yeah, just put it in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, it's also funny because we don't call it the bin here. We call it exactly. trash or garbage. So it's just like I think of bin as like a place where I store clothes that I don't want to wear for a season. Yeah. Exactly. Like you just lightly like it's it's lightly packed, you know, not a garbage. I don't think of a garbage. And it's such a light word that you yeah. think. <laughs> for a, it's a light word for a heavy situation. For the, for the yes. Dumpster. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I went to the hospital and they said the best thing they could do for me was roll the remaining stump up like a little sausage roll. It was heartbreaking. Once again, the way that British people describe things. Did they say that? Did the Imagine you go to the doctor for your missing titty. Yeah, we can roll it up like a little sausage roll, yeah? They come with their... You're not going to tell me that. Uh, That's not bedside paper? manner. The, the the clipboard and they're flipping it they're flipping it <laughs> they, rigorously they have like a breakfast a sausage link and they go, they go they, and they just turn it around and go so this is the best we could do for you and like point the pen you at see the a paper. fucking chorizo and you're like what this is not what i paid taxes for <laughs> like can you help me <laughs> uh, the best we could do is uh this <laughs> it's, like it's a kielbasa <laughs> It's a breakfast sausage because that's the smallest one. Just come oh on. Oh my god. Oh man. Okay. So I don't like that. We gotta talk to that doctor one day because what the fuck are you? <laughs> Best we can do, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, oh McDonald said he became a recluse and began drinking heavily. For two years after I lost my penis, I felt a shadow of a man. My life really fell apart because I had no self-confidence. I drank too much. I didn't see my family and friends. I just didn't want to face up to it, he said. So this for me, it could be me talking about out of my ass or just like getting Mm -hmm. too into the weeds with things. But I truly feel this like this serves as an example of just how important genitals are to us and why not having genitals that line up with your gender identity could cause severe emotional distress Mm -hmm. so if we can see it and empathize with a cishet man that should allow us to see it and empathize with trans people absolutely in my opinion that's a good actually you're not speaking out of your ass or anything like that that's a great uh example and a great way of just making somebody think and go well this makes sense so it should always make sense that is dope but not dope that he lost me yeah, but I mean, it's, it's dope that he grew a penis dope. on his arm. That is true. And, and so, good for him. and so we continue. Yeah, this is just the beginning. This is like his superhero <laughs> origin story. Yeah, he's, exactly. he's just gotten bitten by the radioactive spider. Okay, he just lost Uncle Ben. To be honest, we're very actually, yeah, we're very far from the end. <laughs> uh, so, but then he sorry, found I out from his doctor. What'd you say? I accidentally read the next line. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good next line. (laughs) Then he found out from his doctor about the so-called penis master. 
Professor David Ralph of London's University College Hospital. And that is like, I don't even know what to compare that to. That's like Doc Ock before Doc Ock was evil and him and Peter it's bonded just, for a little bit. That's the penis master. I'm not even mad at the name. <laughs> like, if anyone asks me what I do for work or like, if someone says like, what, what are you known for? I am, I am the penis master. Penis I master, dare yeah. you to tell me I'm wrong. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, he's British. Penis master. Get her. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the penis master specializes in urology, andrology, and genital reconstruction. So the phallus expert famously created a bionic penis for Andrew Wardle, who was born without one, according to the sun. Uh, it gave me a glimmer of hope that I could go back to being a normal bloke. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys speak funny. <laughs> I was about to say, it's not even, I don't, I'm not saying it in like a poke font. It's just No, so it's actually different. humorous. It's, so, it's, it's actually it's, humorous. That's it. That's it. It's just funny. We're tickled, guys. We talk. Yeah. I know you guys hear us say things. Like, um, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ralph said he could perform an arm graft procedure, which would take up to two years. So a graft, if you don't know, uh, grafting refers to a surgical procedure to move tissue from one site to another on the body or from one creature without bringing its own blood supply with it instead of a new blood supply. Sorry, instead, a new blood supply grows in after it's placed. So Whoa. it's grafting, yeah. Fortunately, he received funding for the procedure because it would eventually allow him to urinate properly, not just perform sexually, according to the report. I don't know why they didn't put this in the article, but you know I had to do my research because who the fuck is giving this? I was like, did he have a GoFundMe? Like, oh, yeah. Someone just, I thought it was a crowdfunding thing for sure. I, like. I thought so too. Apparently, the NHS, which is like uh, the UK version of the NHI, uh, it's called the United Kingdom National Health Service, funded 50,000 pounds for this nigga to get a new dick right Damn. so i'm like i'm glad that he got a new dick but i'm just also like okay that's a lot of money yeah i'm like is it because you were a no, white man because <laughs> i'm like exactly I, think, I don't know i mean i don't know how funding works for other things in the me neither because we don't got none how about that <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like i'm hoping they're also shelling that out that much and more for people who like me burn too. victims like who need grafts is for different things don't get me yeah. wrong same. i understand it could be traumatic for someone but at the same time there are people who need some serious stuff i hope they're yeah. also doing that thing. spread the yeah. wealth spread the wealth exactly um but okay so it was all my christmases at once i was so emotional because it was a chance at a new start he said i wasn't worried about the procedure because i had seen what professor ralph and his team could do as far as i was concerned they were miracle workers and i was up for anything they could get <laughs> i was up for anything that could give me my willy back my willy back yeah you have to end <laughs> everything with yeah my willy back yeah <laughs> well my willy back like willy it. back willy back but you could have <laughs> Chilies, Willie back ribs. <laughs> Maybe it's Willies. Anyway, sorry. Willies. <laughs> oh, it's good to be back on this show. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say before I so ridiculously I was say, <laughs> Willies penis back, please? And that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Yes, yes, very important <laughs> contribution <laughs> to this very thoughtful and nuanced conversation. <laughs> I'm so disappointed, but so proud of us for not la like we're we're doing it, we're reading it, but I am dying here. I'm cracking up. This is crazy. 2020 is uh, a weird year. It's a weird year, man. It's okay though. <laughs> okay. Um, not having my penis felt awful. It's most men's worst fear. So to that, I need all men to chime in right now. Is that really all men's worst fear? Because like I your thought death, I thought death was a thing that happened <laughs> to yourself Hello. and to yourself and <laughs> other. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> not saying that this is not a legitimate concern or something that you should be concerned about, but, but like worse? all men's worst fear when like niggas have children, like they can just be kidnapped. <laughs> Oh, little Brownies Billy. Ah, uh, that nigga, he'll be all right. My dick. Oh, <laughs> little Billy, though. Just your penis falling off is the epitome of fear. All men that are is, in right now. <laughs> I need you. I need you to the floor. 
I need y'all to start looking at other things going on in the world and Absolutely in life right. and start examining <laughs> your fears and thinking, well, eh, if my penis falls up, but everything is, is okay outside of that, you won't have I, to take that out, bro. I also like how McDonald is just like an expert of all men. Yeah, it's most men's most fear, according to my <laughs> studies. Most, that's it. <laughs> according to uh, all the chaps that I talked to down at the local pub. <laughs> Chaps, oh no, the pub, oh god. Uh, uh for me, I was all the all the chaps. <laughs> blue. Anyway, for me, I was never worried about sex because I had already had two children. It was always more about self confidence and simple things like using the loo. See, I wasn't wrong. The loo. Okay. McDonald also decided to request an extra two inches on the sixty five thousand dollar appendage. I don't why know, not? McDonald. I why get not? it. But I'm like, don't act like sex wasn't on the agenda because you that's also true. It, to use the loop. Oh yeah, okay. I already had my kids. Like yeah, but how you have two kids? How many times have you fucked? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I already have kids. I don't. I, I only want to have sex for reproduction. Other than that, I'm good. Like okay. But just don't sure. slap another two inches on there so that I can aim at the loo better. Like that, if you want to lie, bro. That's like, a great point. That's you are a great having a point. very vulnerable conversation. Just say, I wanted my yeah. kids back also. We can get into it. Yeah. I was sex, trying to fuck. I sex be good smash. sometimes, bro. I'm like, smash, yo. <laughs> um, they were happy to listen to what I wanted to be like, which was amazing. Not many can say they have a designer penis. I agree that that is amazing. True. Surgeons formed a new manhood with its own blood vessels and nerves using a skin flap on the left arm of the right-handed man. They created a urethra and installed two tubes inflated with a hand pump, allowing him to achieve an erection. The, sta- the shaft was then removed from his forearm, leaving the base, allowing it to form naturally as skin and tissue. He is now waiting for it to finally be transferred to its proper location. When I saw it on my arm for the first time I was so so proud after everything I had been through I didn't feel weird at all it was just a part of me he said I was like any other man I just couldn't leave it alone to begin with <laughs> I just imagine him jerking off his fucking arm just in it <laughs> in, in public way. who knows I don't know it's just on your arm it's readily accessible wow. I thought it was the best thing ever McDonald continued <laughs> I took to it so much, I nicknamed it Jimmy, of course. Uh, that was what me and my mates called each other growing up, and this penis was definitely my new mate, he said. Okay. <laughs> all right. That they can make a new penis at all is incredible, but that they can build it on my arm is mind-blowing, he added. It looks like something out of a weird sci-fi comic, but it's my chance at a normal life. It's been the first step towards being able to go to the toilet and even being intimate with someone. See, there he goes. Like, uh, and also, I was going to say, now he's starting to own up to a little sex, sex, perhaps. A little Oh, sex aside, but it's definitely for the loose. Definitely Just a tad bit. Just a tad. <laughs> Even um, though I don't know how cumbersome it would be to not be able to pee. Like, yeah. How is he peeing? Is he yeah. peeing bag? All those things can. True. If, he, if it's directly in his bladder, that probably really is like a big bad thing. So we I definitely can't. Yeah, we can't downplay yeah. how important it is to go to, to just be able to pee. Yeah. Genitals. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Good point. Good self-check. I'm trying, you know? Um, McDonald said despite wearing long sleeve shirts to hide his quote-unquote bulge, people have sometimes spotted the the misplaced member. (laughs) I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, like, would you ask, though? I probably would. No, I wouldn't ask. I'm not the type of person, like, if anybody has anything going on that I don't quite understand, I'm not the type of person to walk up to them and be like, yo, hey, what's, what's good with that? That's not going to happen. Is that a but, dick like, on your would, arm? If I was your friend and like, oh. we're chilling at the house and, like, I see you dr- reach for your beer and your arm sleeve <laughs> goes back a little bit and there's a penis, we're having a conversation. Like it's not, not like a new, like you saw I had a new tattoo and you're like, is that a new tattoo? Because you can see my arm. I'm not gonna see a penis as a friend and not immediately sit you down and start talking. That's chat. If you're I'm comfortable. <laughs> if you're comfortable. I have a video uh in a bit that I will play for you all. Oh. People, well, I guess YouTube more than not, but uh 
podcast land can hear it people ask me when they see it in the pub or when they see me in the pub and of course people make jokes but i get it it's not every day you see a man with a penis on his arm of course i see the funny side i have to i don't see any other option if i couldn't laugh at the willy on my arm i'd be finished she added And that to me was like a really uplifting statement about what this year is. Like if you cannot laugh, that's just like something that is attached to like your lowest low, but also the ridiculousness of your lowest low. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to make it through. If if you don't laugh, there's nothing. You're just sitting down (laughs) sad as hell, which we've all done. But after a while, you're just like, fuck it. That's why memes exist. That's why memes memes is just... We're, we're laughing about <laughs> shit because we're just like, otherwise, I'm gonna go ape shit, you know? Uh, you skipped this parasite note, and I'm like, you definitely did oh. that in there because Yeah, I did write it in there, but anime. I was like, let me just shorten time. But okay, oh. has any, have you seen the anime Parasite? It is my favorite anime. Really? Oh, yeah, I didn't I know it. that. I yeah, just watched it like it. two months ago or something like that. Loved it. If anybody doesn't so, know the pro, uh, parasites come to Earth and they take over people's bodies but sometimes there's like miss failures where it's like they just take over a certain part of a person's body and so the main character is this guy named Sinichi and he has a parasite on his hand named Migi and I feel like this penis on his arm is McDonald's is that yeah he's friends with it yes they're having conversations exactly he tries very hard to (laughs) to hide it but there's a fucking being on your hand so someone's gonna go hey man what's going on it's a great it's one of it's one of my top five for sure i my favorite like genre or like sub genre of anime is like really gory shit mm-hmm. so like or things that are just at the, at the end the best part of parasite is like the monologue at the end where he's just like looking at the sky and it's just it was my cover photo for facebook for a little bit just like oh wow and i just yeah i do very much enjoy that it's a good time um but yeah, yeah it was a good commentary on it, um humanity yeah 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 these things that we do anyway yeah definitely recommend that thank you for a lot for uh, indulging me on that i was gonna skip of course i saw it i was like nah we gotta talk about this bro (laughs) that's my shit uh wrapping up so but the new penis has still not been attached after four years after the procedure due to a series of missed appointments scheduling problems staff shortages at the hospital and then of course finally the coronavirus pandemic then they canceled again because of the coronavirus it feels like i'm cursed sometimes he said adding that he hopes to finally have it grafted between his legs by the end of the year i am determined this penis I'm determined this penis will ultimately be used for what it was built for. Nice. Peeing and we're rooting for you, bro. Of course we are. Thank you for sharing your story with us, McDonald. That was necessary. Like I need, I needed to come back with that. Actually, (laughs) it's the perfect story, and it has a pretty much happy ending. I think that yeah, it'll be between his legs by the end of the year. Um. The photos are blurred, which is odd to me because it's not odd. I mean, I guess it's a dick, but it's just like, it's a dick on an arm, you know? Here, let me share the screen so YouTube can see it. Share. See that? He's posted up, though. Yes, I also want to show the one where he's posted up. Let's go to that one because that one just makes me laugh. Man's is like, like what's oh, with that pose? <laughs> That's the fucking um. You know I had to do it to him pose. Guys, that's what he said. The with penis, his dick on his arm, and it's just like, it, you, like you definitely know I had to do it to him. So if people I in podcast said, I'm land, doing it to him right. Fucking he's just now. like staring straight down the barrel of the lens, like yo. So <laughs> what's up? Eight. So what's up, my niggas? And he has like one yo. palm in the other palm dick is out but blurred out and it's just like what's good son like you trying to fuck with a real nigga or nah exactly yo (laughs) you don't even have to ask me what i got packed it's right here what up you ready or not (laughs) so shout out to him shout out to the photographer who was like you're gonna pose like this bro because (laughs) that's what we was ready for it he's fucking ready for it I love that. It's I just, too love it's that. There for me. <laughs> oh my god, the eye contact. All right, and now, um, hopefully, let's play this. Let me unplug my headphones because I don't think my thing's going to work. 
we just have this amazing video of him. I think he's in the pub or whatever. Oh, just chilling? Come on, pause. What's your problem? <laughs> All right, share screen one more time. Share. All right, let's full screen that bit. Here we go. Not the British. I keep forgetting they're British. Still my arm there. Yeah? That used to be there. Bro, you know everything that you're seeing to me right now is like I'm dreaming. See things like this, eh? No, but only see, see that in science. Yeah, I never yeah. see this in real life. No. This is real life. This is real life. Oh man. <laughs> so I need oh, to no, didn't do need to re acknowledge the dickhead. <laughs> I, no, he didn't fucking oh my god. So y'all, he just put the fucking dick between his eyes. And he <laughs> called himself a dickhead. People in podcast land, there's just a fucking <laughs> British bloke. Man's got a dick on his arm, yeah? I never seen that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life, man. Just, this is just real chatting life, back man. and forth. But then at the end, because McDonald is fucking, you know, just down he with has to laugh at it. He just time. fucking puts the dick on his arm, on his head, and he's like, big ass. And, and it's, it's resting like, calmly it's, on his it's nose a, It's a dad joke. That only 2020 could do, right? Like, <laughs> oh, big head. Oh, wow. I love it's it. just like it's just like top top two things you think you'd never see in life, and the fact that like here I am, I get him when he's like, "This is real life, man." I get it because that's just like the what? only type of thing you see in science. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is science. yeah, yeah. It is. So wear your mask. Moral of the story. Moral of the story, science is right. Wear your mask. (laughs) Science can do everything. Listen. All right. Let's get into something um, a bit more pertinent than McDonald's dick on his arm. Oh, yeah. Only because because this is the note that I was going to say. And I feel like because of the nature of this show, we do have to say it. Yeah. Um, can this be a method for transfer? Oh, yeah. Gender affirming surgery. The yes. reason why I say that is because we are, it's a, it's a funny story, fuck it. But I actually know someone who is a trans man and they, well, he was trying to get gender affirming surgery and there was a lot of complications, like a lot of complications. Because mm. as you know, black people suffer greatly at the hands of medical professionals, which is too. So when he was saying that he was in pain, it was largely ignored. And it ended up developing an infection. They almost lost their arm. They almost lost their life. So oh, wow. I'm saying it to say, like, shit like this, while funny, and while, like, science is amazing, I need yeah. them to keep that same energy when somebody wants this for gender-affirming surgery. Exactly. And this is, in a way, gender-affirming surgery. Regardless of the fact that this person was born a male, he lost his penis, and yes, he could, you know, not pee and I don't know what that entails but at the same time it's really him saying over and over again that I wanted this because it makes me feel like a man because this is who I am on the inside and I want that to reflect on the outside like every trans person is always saying Mm -hmm. so it's just like keep that same energy because don't don't make it don't make it into something that's like not natural not other shit when you can do it and you can see and understand why somebody wants it exactly yo because I know that the uglier side of it, it can very much be a life changing and a life like threatening thing for people yeah. who want the surgery, but don't have somebody donating $50,000 mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Good points. And then also like to deeper unpack the unnatural thing. A man grew a dick on his arm. So like, we just can't keep using that. This is not what God intended. Like, yeah. What the fuck did God intend, man? Like, I, I just, there's a you whole world, things. there's many things going on. Like, the well, universe well, slowly going towards ultimate destruction one day, where it's just gonna like cease to exist. Like, it's a part of that. What the fuck like, did God intend? You don't know what God only intended. Only focusing up. on the positive, and then when there's so much the shadow work, 
but we're talking about <laughs> shadows of the fucking earth where you're just like none of this stuff is happening God yeah. intended for this, but I'm like these things are all happening at the same fucking time. Bro. At the same time. What is the intention and who and are have you to been decide happening? It? You know, like that, like really, really ugly fish in the dark depths of the ocean that's yes. like goes viral every six months. Yes. Like God intended that. <laughs> God intended anything. Like anything that's happening, God intended it. If you that believe in God, intention. if you believe in God, anything that's happening, God intended it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be happening. So shut the fuck up. Every time, like, obviously, like, I'm agnostic slash atheist, so mm-hmm. some of these things, I just go, whatever. But, like, every time I think about it, I'm, I'd respect it more if you were like, yo, God is, like, a father who just, like, gave birth to something and didn't know how it would turn out. Because, like, we all don't know how it would turn out when you have a kid or something. You just go, do something. And everything just kind of went apeshit. I get that. But if you're telling me everything that's happening right now is an intention... I, I don't know, bro. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. I need y'all to acknowledge all of it before you get it. Yeah. One thing I like, will tell you about God that I read in the Bible is that when he did give birth to all of us, it was via the penis on his arm. <laughs> I don't know if you all missed that message. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... Um, Yo. Ecclesiastes. I've, I've had a great run 69. on this show. <laughs> It has clearly gone off the rails. And at this point, there's nothing else to be said. It's just like, ah, yes, gender theory Ah, and bullshit. (laughs) Samantha. She said it with the most serious face. I I stopped. There was a a lot of deadpan. There was a lot of deadpan up in there. That was amazing. Thank you. But yes, let's let's regroup. (laughs) There needs to be a light shed on something very important that happened yes over the weekend yes yes <clears throat> so there was a sex black sex worker liberation march and vigil had held in times square on august 1st uh so black sex work, sex workers and their allies gathered to commemorate sex worker lives lost due to police violence and covid 19 Mm. attendees wore red and often chanted Laylene Polanco the trans the name of the trans woman who died while in custody at Rutgers Rikers mm-hmm. Rikers yeah Rikers yeah. which we know. spoke Rutgers about is a college um, yeah Rikers yeah. is a college in New Jersey uh we yeah. spoke about Laylene Polanco on Black Sex Workers Lives Matter I will link to that in the show notes uh the speakers included Giselle Marie SX Noir SWOPIWD and Black Trans Nation there was also other speakers um according to the media release for the rallies for the rally black sex workers in New York City are dying and at at cre- in cre- uh, let me take a sec <clears throat> uh so there was a media released release for the sex workers rally which is usually just to tell what the demands are and let people know what they're marching for Mm -hmm. um black sex workers in new york city are dying at at an increased rate for police violence under criminal under the criminalization of sex work by the nypd sex workers are excluded from financial relief bills and face discrimination in accessing housing and other jobs yeah. uh, further discrimination of sex work on digital platforms during the COVID-19 pandemic eliminates other necessary sources of income to survive mm-hmm. uh, black sex workers in New York City demand the de- decriminalization of sex work the decarceration of sex workers the defunding of NYP vice unit and the repeal of the walking wild trans ban Mm-hmm. So the walking wild trans ban is a colloquial name for the loitering for the purpose of prostitution law, which was enacted in 1976. Under the law, which is notoriously vague, can pretty much be for anything as long as mm-hmm. someone's standing outside. Uh, police can apprehend anyone they assume to be engaging in sex work and with essentially no evidence. The law is basically meant to target sex workers, plain and simple, and it allows officers to arrest and detain New Yorkers for simply walking around or standing on the street. It allows police to decide, for instance, that a woman's skirt is too short or that she's been lingering too long on one street corner and to apprehend her based on the suspicion that she's loitering for the purpose of prostitution. So according to the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services, 152 people, 80% women, were arrested under the law in 2018. 49% were Black and 42% were Latinx. Mm. In 2013, which is obviously disappointing, that's crazy. Mm. Um, In in 2013 and 2014, the sex workers' rights 
group Red Umbrella Project found that in one broken court, 94% of the defendants charged under the Northern Law were Black. Mm. 94. There are less than 25% of Black people in New York City. Uh, mm. That is the population. Anyway, the percentage of New Yorkers charged with prostitution who are trans is impossible to know for sure. Attorneys with Legal Aid Society said that NYPD often misgenders their trans clients and listing them as men. Uh, so obviously, oh, wow. we can see this proportion, but we can't even track whether or not this trend is leading towards trans people because they're not even listing them by their right gender. Right. Uh, Black sex workers also rallied to demand the repeal of SESTA FOSTA. We've touched on SESTA FOSTA many times. Mm -hmm. uh, so please look back at our I'm Ugly Fan episode from season four. Great episode. <laughs> it's, a classic. it's a great episode for a deep dive. Uh, black sex, work sex workers, that's what it is. Y'all, I have a list or something. So it, I say sex workers. I swear to y'all, I'm reading it correctly. I'm saying it correctly. It we understand. Heart, right, please. We understand. Uh, black sex workers demand an end to all legislation that considers sex workers as unintended consequences or collateral damage, such as the Earn It Act, which was just passed by the Senate Judiciary Committee. And I apologize, let me. Eliminating Abusive and Rampant Neglect of Interactive Technologies Act. Okay. Turning online platforms into government actors that search users' accounts without an, a warrant. There you go. And that's very, I think that's similar to Sasha Foster where it's like not providing pro, uh, like protection so people are hiding and they're, it, this act is making them even more invasive on internet activities. Mm -hmm. people, leading mm -hmm. people doing things in darker uh, alleys and potentially being more vulnerable to attacks. Right. Um, so yeah, they want to repeal that act as well. And they demand justice through direct action targeting city, state, and federal police policymakers. Um, there's a couple of quotes at the end by some of the speakers. Mm -hmm. and I love quotes, they're great. Yeah. Uh, so by SX Noir, she said, historically black sex workers have built culture in the areas of music, fashion, beauty, sexuality, technology, LGBTQIA rights, and women's rights. As Black sex workers, we demand the acknowledgement and support for the advancement of our rights and contribution to the culture we navigate every day. Sex workers are thought leaders, a thought leaders, but it would spell like that. You, you, we love it. You and love futurists. And it is time for a community to show up for the most marginalized to lead the world's liberation. We are not free until we are all free. Another quote is Giselle Marie. Uh, shout out um, to Giselle. XX Noir and her podcast, Thought Leaders Podcast. I'll link hey. to that in the show notes. She's really dope. That's good. Um, then we have Giselle Marie. I call to the politicians of New York to grant amnesty for sex workers during the midst of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And according to, well, T.S. Candy says, according to the National Survey and Report by the National Gender for Transgender Equality in 2015, Meaningful Work, 40% of Black trans, transgender gender non-conforming people mm -hmm. self-report have engaged in sex work at some point. This is likely an underestimate because of the stigma of sex work. So people are ashamed and not reporting when they're trading sex. So this sure. definitely affects a huge group of people, 40% yeah. of what we know of, but probably, who knows? Yeah. Uh, if you want to know more, if you want to see some clips of that happened from the rally. If you want to help support, you can head over to blacksexworkerliberation.com for information for how to donate and to move on. Yes. We have to protect our black sex workers out there. Oh, yeah. Also, shout out to Giselle Marie, the founder of uh, Stripper Strike NYC. Hey. Years ago. Oh, what? Yeah. You got the tea, Sam. Niggas be doing I need the work. They do. They do. Yeah, they really do be doing the work. Um, if anybody was there, let us know. I think one of our um, listeners showed up to that. Oh, really? Yeah. Let us know. Put yeah. in, send us a letter. We'll, we'll read about it. Yeah. Thank you for covering that action. Didn't see many places covering that action. Yeah. I wonder why. It's time to drop the stigma against sex work because all Black lives matter, and that includes the lives of Black sex workers. They hey, motherfuckers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I definitely encourage no people to go back and listen to that um Black Sex no Workers Lives Matter. 
for more yeah no swerves for sure um for more context if you're like wait what um but anyway (laughs) uh is this conversation in this episode so far resonating with you helping you learn some new shit helping you unlearn some old shit or just allowing you to have a good ass time it is you say well we love to hear that we would also love for you to support the continuation of conversations like these if you're listening to us on a podcast app take a moment to subscribe to us on that app or drop five stars and leave a rating for the homies if you have a little extra change you can drop some cash in the paypal at paypal.me slash inner or come join our patreon community and access our chat and virtual events for as low as two dollars a month on patreon.com slash inner uprising or you can just hit up your friend and say yo listen to this podcast thank and love you all for your continued support and now i'm going to ask you rodeca if you want to know something yeah what's that i believe you can look feel and smell like a snack without harming your body okay you believe it and i want to believe it too so tell me how well i believe it because I dig my native deodorant, which allows me to do all of those things. Or should I say deodorants? Because I have many flavors of this deodorant. And you might okay. be asking, why the fuck do you have several flavors of one deodorant? And the answer is because it's a great product. And that's no cap. Hey. I'm wearing it right now. The bitch smells I good. I, too, am wearing it. Hey. Does I the bitch smell you. good? Does the bitch smell I good? I do. I always do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, uh, Native deodorant doesn't just block odor better. It's just made better. Native has ingredients you've heard of like coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch. It's also vegan. Like, I was going to say like Rodeca, but you don't want to. Don't put me on blast, y'all. Sorry. (laughs) And is never tested on animals. It's vegan and never tested on animals. Aluminum forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating. That's why Native never uses ingredients like aluminum, parabens, sulfates, or talc. And you might be thinking, man, I'm a stink without that aluminum plugging up my glands, though. (laughs) But that's not the case. Switching to an aluminum-free deodorant doesn't mean you have to sacrifice on odor protection. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. With over 10 cents, including rotating seasonals, Native has something for everyone. Their their popular classic scents are coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, and citrus and herbal. So I'm currently, like I just mentioned, rotating between scents and is actually scents in their summer pack. So that includes coconut flower and mandarin, which is a flirty smell, which is what I'm wearing now because I knew I had to read that that Dipsy ad earlier and I had to be yeah, like, sexy. I want to smell it, I want to feel it, I want to be it. It's the first day back. I had to be nice and sexy for that ass um, or those asses all those asses listening and there's those ears uh then there's the jasmine and cherry blossom which is a pleasant like little around the house smell uh then there's the cotton and cedar wood which i compare to like a fresh laundry smell so that's the one you go to work to yeah Yeah. uh i love all three truly i've been using them throughout this hot ass summer and this is a hot ass summer because the world is ending unfortunately and climate change is a thing as we know yeah um, and I never smell. So, you know, climate change, boo. Never smell. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> uh, Yay. This, this past summer, I've been playing tennis damn near every freaking morning. And it'd be hot as fuck out there. And I lift my arms because, you know, you got to. <laughs> yeah. um, and I have no fear because the stank is not there. So Native is risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S. plus uh, free 30-day returns and exchanges. See why so many people, including myself and Rodeca, love Native and check out the over 14,000 five-star reviews. That's a lot of five-star reviews. Uh, Do what I did. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedo.com slash IHU or use promo code IHU at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash I as in inner, H as in ho, U as in uprising, or use promo code IHU at checkout for 20% off of your first order. Or then. Yeah. That. Exactly. Okay, now we're going to get into a segment that we like to call Fuck Me. It is about our sexual, romantic, and dating lives. And Rebecca has a lot, a lot of stuff to tell you about. And I have a little little update, a little little ask for you all, a little uh, check-in. 
Um, so the check it is that I went through something fairly traumatic over the break. And Rebecca can attest to that. I can. <laughs> this I... was in a uh, dark place. Uh, I have no intention of speaking about that dark place here, though. But I, yeah, I don't do gotta know everything, her. girl. It's true. I do have a realize that I've been mad slow to respond to emails and have a bunch of ass media requests, which is uh, the media, sorry, the segment where I review media. If you're new to the show, it's a very cool segment. A lot of people ask me to lo- uh, watch a lot of things. And I was just like, I want to watch Hunter Hunter on Netflix, though. <laughs> so I'm not doing that, but I'll get to it eventually. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'll get to it all. I will respond to your DMs and your Patreon messages and your emails in due time. But in the meantime, I am asking for a teeny tiny bit of grace as well as positive words and affirmations because niggas lead love and support out here, son. Yo, we are human. Okay, should be happening. Human. Yeah, still trying to show up, but at the same time, it's like should be happening. Give me a <laughs> crutch or two. Give me like exactly. a cane for a little bit. You deserve. I, need a boost. I don't Thank care. You. you deserve. Thank you, my nigga. And you are loved, and I love you. And I know you got a tribe around you, but just know, like, but yo, we got you, bro. I was about to say, I was about to go off, but at the end of the day, we got you, and Thank you're never you, alone. Man. And you deserve a break. Thank what, you, my friend. Thank the you. World, friend. The world ain't always sweet. <laughs> not it always sweet. It's not, but you know what it is? My native deodorant. No, I just <laughs> can't get out of advertising. Thank you, my nigga. I love you. And I love you guys. That's my update. Rodega, what's, what's with All this right, LSD y'all. shit? What's going on here? Right, Your y'all. ego died. Right, I heard. My ego died. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know what, I think Sam hit me up and I was She's just like, so I heard you're doing some stuff. Because I, I think I went on my close friends or something. And then I was like, I could do you one better. I'm not even going to describe it. I'm going to send you my notes from <laughs> yeah, the fact that. that I am going through some shit. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> I've done, I think, I've, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, it's not a bright of those. Things, I've done a couple of different things, you know, in terms of drugs. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. drug ass. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, let me take a tab because why not it's a pandemic it's a pandemic whatever and i've done it before i've definitely probably not more than 10 times but definitely not like once so i've definitely done it enough where i'm like i know what i'm getting like when you take a sip of alcohol and you go i know i'm gonna be a little bit buzzed at the end of this and you know it's just something that you're used to yes um so like fuck it (sighs) why not and um the why not turned into <laughs> why this is why not this is oh. why this is why you <laughs> need in this and it was like i took it with uh, another person and we both had taken it before i've been in this space before because usually the do's are like make sure you're in a familiar environment make sure you're with somebody that you're comfortable with make sure that you are uh just in a space where you won't be triggered by anything basically yeah and all the boxes were checked and yet, I found myself. <laughs> I found myself. It was, and it's like, if I hadn't done it myself, like, I really would be like, oh, this is exaggeratory, whatever, whatever. But, like, you know how in movies when people are, like, hippies or they're taking LSD and it's just, like, these little kitschy wave, like, they'll move their hands and it's like, ew, that's what it is. No. I'm sitting there frozen uh transported to another place looking at myself from the corner of the room going oh wait a minute it was like honestly i'm i know it it sounds maybe it doesn't sound fun but it was terrible it was really like at one point doesn't time, sound fun to me <laughs> I was like, and then like the lights are on uh there's music playing and then like i love tame and paula like i i have a pretty ranged uh musical taste but like tame and paula is my even when I'm not tripping, I feel like I'm tripping type of music. Mm-hmm. So I put him on because I'm like, oh, maybe I'll finally understand him. Or like, I'll just be watching something I'm familiar with so I feel better. Yeah. And it was just like, it bumped it up so much that I was like, why the fuck would I do that? And I was convinced that he's always known that I would be sitting there in this moment and he's just laughing at me. Like he's just <laughs> sitting there. Kevin Parker and Tame Impala is like, oh, you saw it? Here you go. And it's just like, I've seen videos where it's just like someone's taking your hand and you're like, look at me, look at me, don't look at anything else. And it's just like, you're running through this field of fire and 
y'all, y'all. And it was just like, it was a, it was, it was a harrowing hours, <laughs> couple of hours. But at the same time, I think it definitely changed certain certain things in me where I'm like, yo, one, if I could survive that, I could survive anything. But also mm. just like, in terms of like my mental, I really understand why like hippies or people of that movement were really like, peace and love, man. Cause you, you just, it's a connectedness. And this is coming from somebody who like, I definitely am in touch with spirituality and just like knowing like energies and all that type of stuff. But I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm the type of person who's just like believing in this like bigger picture, but I mm. felt very much connected and knowing that um, everybody's coming from the same source. Oh my God, it sounds crazy. Uh, but like, I, like, I mean, that's true all, though. We all come from Stardust. Just, we all call from Stardust. We're all coming from the same materials and because we're on the same source, we're all just kind of like, I don't know what's going on and that's why these whole fucking fields of science are born because it's just a constant trying to figure out the why but sometimes the why is just like because because you're here because of this damn that's Sorry. Good. I get done no no but that's my call reminder. <laughs> it's very much like every time I've heard the term you kind of just like lose your own selfness and in not a way that's negative, in a way that's like, I'm so much more than this, and it's not just, oh, it's an ambulance. I'm so much more, but also so much less than I think I am, in a mm. way that it's like, and it's a good thing. It's like, all the things that you think are big are so small, and all the things that you think are small can be meaningful and big. And it was very transformative. Yeah, and uh, Chris is cracking me up all the time because he says that like he's like you're really just like way more direct now. And he was like, well, and I was like, right? I was like, I don't want to. Niggas do done this. changed yeah, I like, from the trip. Like, I did because it was just like holy and this smokes. Is coming from a couple of interactions that I had, which is also something I want to talk about. I don't stand up for people. I spend a lot of time like in my own head and very much like I let things happen to me because I don't want to bother people because mm. I don't want to like ruffle any feathers mm. and I assume any type of like resistance is going to be met with someone hating me I don't know it's just the way that I've always done it mm -hmm. but it's just like the other day I needed to like I was somebody was driving me somewhere and I need to pick up my clothes from the house so I got in the car and like, they didn't tell me to pick up my clothes. So I was like, yo, y'all didn't tell me to pick up my clothes. I need to go get it. And then they stopped me like, oh, in another life, you have just sat there and let it happen. And I just sat there and had no clothes. I've done stuff like that because it's just, I don't want to do it. But I'm telling you, it's before that trip and after that trip. That that oh, it's like, shit. I don't think it's so transformative that I'm going to be an entirely different person. But I just also feel like, we don't got time for that. And like, nobody's ever going to know anything if I don't speak and just like, fuck it. You know, it's really just trying to be better and not suffer and like be my own battle for myself. Yo, like me. Wow. And it I was, it was, I, when it was done, like, I was like, why would anybody want to do that? But then I was like, I kind of get why people want to do that because it makes you feel, it makes things feel bigger. It makes mm -hmm. things feel more like, okay, sure, I don't have all the answers, but we're all searching and, like, you can find it and find positivity in not knowing it, creating mm -hmm. this existence and this meaningful existence. But, yeah, y'all, it was, I, I named it the acid trip from hell or heaven. I don't know, because being in it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but at the same time, it was, I wasn't ready for it and I didn't go into it, but I'm glad it happened. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Uh, but that also led me to thinking about my polyness. And it, this was all from this one trip, but like my polyness. Transformative. I, like, I know. My polyness, like, I've always, I'm in a lot of groups. Like, this was when I was really going through, like, an anxious time. And another piece of advice that I gave everybody, which was just, like, finding your online community. Because obviously you can't, like, walk into places right now. So I've been yeah. really much, like, anything that I want to know more about or I want to feel like other people are all, also questioning. So I'm like in an LSD group now in like more poly groups, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the poly groups 
are just so fucking toxic, bro. Like they're so bad in a lot of ways because this morning I had a conversation where it was just like, would you, what are your qualms about dating a married woman? And then literally a guy was like, um, this shouldn't be surprising, but it's always surprising where a guy was just like, um, it's okay for a man to have many wives, but, and then everyone oh, was just no. like, he's fucking 101. <laughs> he's fucking sister wives up in here. And then I saw like so many women who were just like, this is the ashiest energy that I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. And I was like, I get it, but it, it hasn't turned me away from being poly, but at the same time, it's definitely changed what I want. I really don't like the idea of being a real corn hunter which is very much your intention but i know mm-hmm. how off-putting that can be for single women who right. are just constantly being chased by couples or like this mentality that just like you have to date both people that's just not fair so it's really kind of freed up my idea of what i want um obviously we've discussed things but i very much spoke to him about like we just need to go with the flow like whatever our boundaries are sure but like my dream at this point is just like i tried like uh, just a whole bunch of people if we're down with it we're down with it if we're not we're not i metamors and I, I like when we first started uh thinking about being poly he had went on a date and the person that he was going on a date with did express that they didn't really want to have a relationship with me mm-hmm. which to me obviously that there's more than one way to poly i can't ex- I, I wouldn't force you to do that so i'm very very accepting of it but it did also make me kind of reflect on what I desired and I very much like the idea of kitchen table poly which is just you know everybody sitting around we might not be fucking we might not be doing stuff but you're our metamor and I want to be cool with you or at least cordial hey Chris is not here you want to come upstairs and have a cup of coffee while you wait sure like stuff like that like that type of stuff makes me happy because I don't really want children so to me it's just like this idea of a family but a made family yeah and whether that be an interwoven thing of being romantic, platonic, uh, or I've dated an asexual person before, so it doesn't even have to be any of that. It's just just a network of people who love each other, basically. We all live in a house. Maybe we'll get a commune with some, some cows. Very much, uh, niggas <laughs> is just out here changing their ways and going, I just need to shed, yeah. shed society and live <laughs> on the X. <laughs> But it's like fuck society, much- you know. Exactly. That's like that's a very um beautiful and I think healthy and not reductive way of living. It's like an yeah. additive way of living. And what I hate about monogamy, and I could talk about this forever in a day, oh. is just like it's very like this is the way things are, this is the way things have to be, and because these are these societal scripts, this is these this is the reductive way that I'm going to live my yeah. life. And this is, like, what I'm going to cut out of my options of ways yeah. that are not, like, good or healthy or particularly even what you want. So It's so, it's, in monogamy, in a lot of ways, is exactly what you said, but it also almost doesn't give room for people to change because it's just, like, I have to stick with these things. And even though I met this person when I was 20 and I am now 35 years old and I feel like a completely different person, I don't want to, there's just, like, so many things that you have to adhere to and I prefer the freedom of being poly and being like hey I still love you but maybe I want to explore these things and see who I am outside of this person and blah 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 it's Mm -hmm. always like and and don't get me wrong monogamy can be beautiful if it's done right but it's done wrong yeah but is it is that what to say I'm like no I mean for me no it's just like (laughs) there's just no way um I'm, it this ties into just who I am as a person, my beliefs, all that type of stuff. There's just no way. Um, but I can understand that, you know, maybe there's just one person out there that you just, you fuck with them. And they're just like the person for you. But it's so rare and so often not done correctly, as we can see with like the backlash of these entanglements and so much has happened this last month. It's just, and watching that, I'm like, oh my God. They, they're probably y'all. They, they just, they're figuring it out, or maybe they're not, who knows, but whatever. It's just like this. The space to figure it out is a very beautiful space. It's, that's exactly what I mean, and that's why it's a strong preference for just, like, freedom, and that's mm-hmm. why I changed my beliefs from, I don't even think that I necessarily wanted to be in a triad, but it was so, it's so pushed. It's almost like the next level up from 
monogamy, like this male, female, female triad. It's right, yeah. Con- it's a, it's, we know. It's, yeah. Do, it's still doing monogamy and it's still it's kind of doing heteronormativity. It's another person and yeah. it's just making it almost worse. Like, so, <laughs> and, and it's so pushed that I'm just like, it's become, and I'm glad I've joined these communities and obviously being on the show, just like learning about it. But it's, I've just never had that example in my life. The example is a probably that I have had. It's always been, all right, you do you, you do, I'm going to be me and we communicate, we figure it out together. Uh-huh, so that's communication, the thing that, wow. That's communication is, is, you know. <laughs> you no, know, we say it every episode. People don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> and it, it can all be so simple. It really does. It really can. Um, but yeah, that's definitely all this trip, all this trip and in. That's exciting. It's fun. I would love to see where all of it goes. Are you going to, do you plan on tripping again? Do you plan on using, like, are you going to be a not? Like a micro, like a micro dosing type of thing? No, I think not is just like people who you, and I might be fucking this up, but people who just like use drugs to explore often. There is, I know what word you're talking about. Uh, a psychonaut. Yeah, actually, you are saying okay. it correctly. It's a psychonaut. Yeah. Um, I have thought about it. I, at first, it was very intimidating, but yeah, I, I definitely, I've been drinking a lot more during the pandemic, like a lot more than everyone has. Yeah. Um, and I don't really like it because lately, because it's been like back to back to back, I had a whole day where I was just out for the count and I don't really like it. I'd rather if I'm going to be on drinking, I'm just going to see the fucking other side of the veil i'll do that (laughs) that seems more productive yeah and i think i definitely at first i swore it off and i said i was not going to do it i mean yeah why not your own change nice yeah i dig that thank you for sharing that with us That's that's really cool reminds me of a story that um i think we talked about this on patreon not on the actual show but it was like a love and relationship experts using psychedelics in couples therapy. Yeah. To kind of like unpack things that were below the surface. So Psycho- psychedelics in general, both co- couples therapy, but also PTSD. Yeah. Also for therapy in general. Mm-hmm. One, one very like, aside from all the things that I said towards the end, it was so much like I was a child, but not like as if I was reduced to an infant state, but very much the feeling and the smells and the things that I had not remembered since I was a child oh, wow. were coming yeah. out. And I was just like laughing because like, I can see myself as a kid. I can think about all of these things. And it's just like, it's always there, but you can't unlock it. So the fact that it was coming out and like, I was remembering this jug that I used to pour juice out of and just like the sound that it made. And like all of those things were coming back. I was like, oh yeah, I definitely see why food is there because it just unlocks so many levels. And I mean, I, yeah, I definitely would like to dabble in that and continue doing that because I feel like if it's doing something that's going to open me up and make me better, that's, I'm always for that as opposed to, like, regressing. Fuck yeah, bro. That's really cool. Nice. Well, <laughs> of course, we look forward to hearing more. If you guys are at home doing your own personal acid trips or whatever kind of psychedelics and it's like opening up your mind and shit like that, yeah, let us know. I definitely want to hear some stories like that. I would love to hear that. (laughs) Um, We're going to skip fuck you for this week, but resume next week. If you have any listener letters to send us, you can do that at ihupodcast at gmail.com. You can also leave a voicemail at 404-491-9158. Once again, that's 404-491-9158. I do not answer the phone. I would never do that. <laughs> Even no in real does. life, I would never do we'll that. Watch the phone ring and <laughs> never touch it. <laughs> you called me. Me and Sam are both those type of people. So, <laughs> yeah. So definitely call us. We will not answer. We will simply play it on the show. Uh, yeah. What are our social medias and shit like that? Oh, wait, I forgot to say, if this episode made you laugh, helped you learn something, made you feel good, made you question yourself in a good way, or positively moved you in any sense of the word, please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher and let everyone you know know that you love these hoes and uh, we appreciate all of you. We do. And if you would like to follow us on social media, you can do so at In A Whole Up Rising without the G on Twitter in a whole uprising on Instagram and Facebook. You can join our Facebook group by searching in a whole uprising 
C U M M U N I T Y. And you can head over to innerhawkrising.com to sign up for weekly goodies via our newsletter, pay a hole, or to check out our merchandise. And if you would like to follow me, my name is Rebecca. Don't know why I just said my name again. And <laughs> my Instagram is The Darkest Timeline. And on Twitter, I am Exist and Crisis. Nice, nice, nice. I am Slam Rid on Instagram and Twitter, and Carmen Sam Diego on Instagram for some travel photography. That's it. Have a great week. See you in the next. <laughs>